Welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications and we are finishing off with the last of the drill problems for chapter 13. So let me jump on down there. Yeah, okay so um, you know you were it says here from problem 16-7 your supervisor has requested that you calculate the following ratios rounded to the nearest hundredth. Okay so you know in for drill problem 16-7, you had this here income statement, and you have these figures for 2014 and 2015. Oh, let's see, what am I doing here? Okay, good. Um, and then you had the uh, balance sheet for the same time frame. Let me erase that. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, for um, drill problems 16-8 to 16-14, um, you know, I could have taken and said, okay, the odd number problems of uh, 9, which is the asset test, 11, which is asset turnover, um, and 13, the net income after tax to the net sales, but I just included the, all of the different ratios so that you uh, get the practice doing them. Okay, and so I'll just work through each and every one, and I don't, um, I'm not going to uh, be bouncing back and forth between these two financial statements. Okay, um, well, actually, maybe to a certain extent, maybe I should, so that you know where the numbers are coming from. Yeah, okay, all right, I will bounce back and forth. And since I don't have too much real estate here, um, and I uh, want to keep on the same slide, uh, just have patience and bear with how this is going to work. Okay, so 16-8 is um, the current ratio. And remember, the current ratio, I'm going to write this up here, pause the video and copy this stuff down, you know, as you need go back over it okay because I'm going to do be doing a lot of writing and a lot of erasing right and as soon as you don't know something like I said pause it and, and go back so for the current ratio where you know the formula for that is current assets over current liabilities so when we go go up to um, where are our assets and liabilities where our assets and liabilities are on the balance sheet and in this case here, the way this here uh, balance sheet is formatted, it does tell us, you know, it's going to provide us with our current assets and it's going to provide us with our current liabilities. And there's the number right there. There's my assets, 61,000. And there's my liabilities of 20,000. So I have um, 61,000 and I divide it by the 20,000 for the liabilities and that gives me a ratio of 3.05 for 2015. Okay. Now for 2014 I have 45.5 and I have 12,000. Okay. 45.5 and 12,000. So 45.5 over 12,000. And that gives me um, 3.79. Okay. Now remember, the current ratio is looking at, you know, um, our liquidity. Do I have enough current assets that I can convert to cash real quick in order to pay off my, you know, current liabilities? We're not talking about our long-term liabilities. We're talking about, you know, current ones like our accounts payable and like notes payable. It isn't including mortgages, right? And as you can see, we had three times as many assets as we had liabilities for both years. So we're okay in that, that respect. Now the asset test ratio Right, so that's a different formula. Okay, the asset test ratio is our current assets minus our inventory minus our prepaid expenses. Okay, 
prepaid expenses, and that's all divided by the current liabilities. Right? So when we come up to our balance sheet, yeah, we had our current assets of 61000 but we have to take out our prepaids. I'm sorry, we're, we have to take out our inventory, which is 8500 and our prepaid expenses of 24000 Okay, so I have 61,000 less 8,500 less 24,000, and my uh, current liability stayed the same at 42,000. So I have the 61,000 minus 8,500 minus 24,000. And that's all divided by the $20,000. Uh, and that gives me, for 2015, a ratio of 1.43. For We're going to do the same exact thing for um, 2014. We have the 45000 less the 14000 less the 10000 and for our liabilities, we still have the 32,000, oops, sorry, 12,000, not 32, okay? So, you know, when I'm working these problems, really all I'm doing is, is um, at first, in order, you know, I know the formula, yeah, I'm going back and I'm retrieving the information um, from the financial statements and plugging it into the formula and you know then I'm doing the math and once I have the math okay so this here is going to be 1.79 as my ratio once I have the ratios and I've you know done all of this math now I can make judgments about this information you know with the asset test ratio I'm still in good shape because I have you know more cash than I have uh, current liabilities because that's what I'm, I'm looking at you know, you know, I have cash, you know, my current assets are cash, inventory, prepaid expenses. But when I strip out the inventory and the prepaid expenses, all I'm left with is just cash. So it's like, do I have enough cash to cover my current liabilities? And if it was a one-to-one -one ratio or it was less than one, then that means, you know, I don't have enough. But I do have, you know, the ratio is greater than one, which means I have enough cash to, to cover those current liabilities. So if somebody said to me, you know, like if I owed a vendor money and, you know, he, you know, he gave me credit and I had accounts payable and he came to me and said, hey, I need the money. You have to pay your bill right now. You know, this asset test ratio is telling me I have that cash available in order to be able to uh, pay off that, uh, that vendor. And that if you, in the previous videos, um, you saw me discuss the relationship between the current ratio and the asset test ratio because we are talking about current assets and current liabilities. You know, they're used for two different, you know, two different things. I mean, you know, the current ratio is, you know, is do I have enough assets to cover those liabilities, but it's of no pressing need. Okay, whereas the asset, think quick ratio is the other name, you know, quick down and dirty. Do I have the cash to be able to pay it off without having to call up my accounts receivable uh, customers and, um, you know, trying to sell off my inventory really quick um, in order to be able to, you know, uh, generate cash in order to pay off my liabilities. Okay. All right. So uh, let's move on here. Um, average days collection. Okay. Uh, come on, pen. Okay, so for the average days collection, it was my um, accounts receivable divided by my net sales over 360. Okay. So where do I find my net sales? On my income statement. Okay. Where's my net sales on the income statement for 2015? It's right here, 18,000. And where is my accounts receivable? Um, my accounts receivable is on the balance sheet, 16,5. So I have 16,500, and I'm dividing that by the 18,000 
which is divided by 360. Okay, so I take 18,000 divided by 360, and that gives me 50. Okay, so I have 16,500 stays in the numerator, and now I have 50 in the denominator, and so that. Um, when I divide those, I end up with 330. So my average day's collection is 330 for 2015. For 2014, I'm looking at 14.9 for my net sales, and I'm looking at 12,500 for my receivable. So plug those numbers in and do the same thing. Uh, 12.5 divided by 14.9 over 360. So 14.9 divided by 360 gives me 41.388. So I have 41.3888. And when I divide there, I end up with... 30201. Okay. So 302.01 for my average day's collection. All right. So I'm in 11 minutes and I have one, two, three, four more to go. So I'm going to pause here and then pick up with pick these up in the next video and try and finish them off.